our two deep dives, um, starting with Probe Lab, Dennis. Hi everyone, this is Dennis from Probe Lab. Um, at Probe Lab, we want to measure, or we measure the performance of, of Web3 protocols and benchmark those protocols against target milestones and also and propose improvements. And um, for this particular measurement campaign, we take a look at the net uh, hole punching success rate as uh, Martin already teasered earlier in this uh, presentation. You may know that net traverse is a quintessential problem in peer-to-peer -peer networks. And uh, currently we, re we rely on um, relay peers that, uh, proxy, that act as a, as a proxy for all our traffic. And um, since Kubo 0.13, actually all pieces are shipped and enabled by default for an uh, alternative technique um, that allows two peers to, behind nets to connect to each other. And this is um, hole punching via the DCUTR protocol, which is also linked there. Um, DCUTR stands for di um, Direct Connection Upgrade Through Relay. And I will go to, um, into the details uh, in, in a bit. And in this measurement uh, project, uh, we want to uh, find out the success rate um, of this protocol. So how often are peers are actually able to connect to each other? and maybe also uncover potential improvements uh, to this technique. So just briefly about um, this DCOTR protocol. Um, so hole punching in general um, happens when two peers simultaneously open a connection to each other at their predicted external addresses. And in this case, both routers of both peers um, update their state tables and have seen a packet going out. And if they have seen a packet going out, they also allow packets um, at that address um, that the packets went out to, um, to go in. And if both peers um, simultaneously connect to each other, um, they are actually able to, um, yeah, to establish a TCP or a quick connection um, as you wish. And so the problem here is the synchronization. So both peers need to do it at the same time. And this happens at a rendezvous point, so, sort of, uh, so we call it. And um, actually, since Kubo 0.13, all deployed Kubo nodes can act as such a uh, rendezvous point. And um, Max has actually given a great talk about uh, the whole protocol at Peer to Peer Paris earlier this year. Um, I highly recommend check it out. Um, yeah, it's linked down below. Right. So, how do we want to measure the success rate of this protocol? So, the challenge is how do we detect net peers? Um, the idea is that um, we just want to do a lot of hole punches to a diverse set of peers, um, but we actually don't know where they are. And um, the main idea here is that we deploy a honeypot and um, attract those peers behind nets. And this honeypot is just a DHT server node um, that walks around the DHT, and it's, it's a very stable node. And this um, this and since it's a very stable node, we hope that other peers are actually um, including the honeypot peer into their routing table. So if peers behind nets um, request content from the network, um, they actually come across this honeypot. And if the sunny pod uh, detects a peer that supports this DCOTR protocol and is also only reachable by a relay peer, which is the indicator that it's behind the net, then we save this inbound connection to a database. Then we have a second component here, which is a server, which just serves um, uh, those detected nutted peers to, to a fleet of clients and also exposes another API to track the whole punch results. So these clients are actually um, run in, in a diverse set of home network or supposed to be run in a diverse set of home networks. And uh, these clients are actually just um, DCDR capable um, lib peer to peer nodes. It's, um, we have two kind uh, two uh, implementations here, one in Rust and one in Go. And those clients actually just um, periodically query, query the server for nutted peers then perform the whole punch dance, this DCDR protocol, and just report back how, um, yeah, report back the outcome if it worked or not. And uh, those the Rust client is actually implemented by Elena and Max, so shout out to both of them. So the progress so far is that the infrastructure is there. So this architecture that you've just seen is deployed and it's, it's working. And there's to Grafana dash was also link, uh, the link uh, you can find down below. This is probably the um, the most interesting part here. So what's the success rate? And there are already uh, some results here. So um, right now we have only four clients deployed and the success rate for these four clients is around, as you can see, 80%. So you can see the time on the X axis and the success rate, success rate on the Y axis. The success rate is around 80%, but it's less for peers that are in a VPN uh, network. Another improvement proposal or um, another improvement suggestion that we could make. So the pro, um, the protocol actually um, it tries this a hole punch, this hole punching thing a couple of times. 
And but we found out with this preliminary results that actually if it doesn't work with the first time, the second and third attempt also won't work. So we could actually stop the, um, the protocol there. And um, there are many more results um, for, for the four clients that I showed here. Um, you can find it at the link uh, there at more results. So what's next? Uh, we want to extend those clients. So the fleet of clients that we deployed. So this is a call out for you, for all of you to participate. Um, please check out this uh, Google form. Um, this will uh, just ask for your home network um, conditions, like which, uh, which which router you have at your home network. And then uh, you will receive an API key and you can download um, the these puncher clients that you've seen earlier and uh, just participate and um, contribute some data of your own network. And yeah, that's my brief deep dive, deep dive already. Thank you.